Hey guys, this is Tanya from Front Yard Homestead Backyard Raised Bed. I am doing my seed starting video as I promised earlier. The purpose of this video is for me to show you how I start my seeds and then to give you tips on how to do it yourself. Everybody's process is a little bit different. However, most of the basic things are still the same. So I'm gonna show you some of the basics that I start out with every time I start seeds. Of course, I have my packets of seeds. I like to use these three inch plastic seed starting cups. These are reused for sure. I did kale and collard greens and cabbage in these earlier in the fall. And so I'm just gonna cross these out and write the name of the new seeds that are starting in these. You don't have to use these kind of pots. I have seen people use red solo cups, um, yogurt containers, there are lots of different things. You can be creative. You don't have to spend money and buy things. I also use a bag of seed starting mix. It's really important to use seed starting mix and not soil of any type. You don't want to use potting soil, dirt from outside or anything like that. You need a sterile soil to use that doesn't have any other potential bacteria, parasites, anything in it that could harm your seeds. And just to let you know, I actually do boil my seed starting mix in hot water before I plant my seeds in it because sometimes you get little soil gnats that will hatch in the soil and they will drive you crazy and make your life just ah! So I learned the hard way to boil the soil before I plant my seeds in it. And that way I'm not going to be fighting with those gnats while my seedlings are growing in the house for the next two and a half months. The last must have item that I use in seed starting is a seedling tray. This is what the seedlings will sit in once they start growing. In addition to those items, I also use a tea kettle, a bucket, and some chopsticks. Those items are for either boiling the soil and letting it sit or for poking a nice little hole in the soil so that I can put the seed in. It's important to point out that I'm starting seeds in Central Texas. My growing zone is zone 8B, 9A. You might be in a different growing zone and so your timing might be a little bit different as to when you can start seeds and when you can transplant them. But for my area, I start seeds generally either in late August for my fall and winter crops or, for, or in December and January for my spring and summer crops. So I'm gonna be talking to you today about how to plant seeds for my spring and summer crops. I'll be planting tomato, pepper, and eggplant seeds. But in August, I generally will plant collard greens, cabbage, broccoli, kale, Swiss chard, maybe some turnips. The reason that you start seeds indoors is to give them a head start on the season. Usually you're starting them while it's either too hot outside for those seedlings or too cold outside for those seedlings. So you start them indoors for about six to 10 weeks, depending on the plant. And that will give it time to grow in a safe environment. And then you put it outside either after the frost, like um, our tomatoes, eggplants, and peppers will be going out, or several weeks or even a month or two before the frost if you're talking about fall and winter crops. When you start your seedlings indoors, you wanna put them in a dark place to germinate, and then after they germinate, you put them on your grow rack. I have a whole video all about my grow rack setup, the types of lights I use, the types of shelving I use. I will put a card here with that video so you can check it out. It's a great video that gives you tips about how to create your own grow rack and the lights that you might want to use to help you get really good produce. One of the things you're gonna to have to pay attention to is the germination rate for the plants. Some seeds will germinate faster than others. Tomatoes germinate after six to eight days. Eggplants germinate after seven to 12 days and peppers germinate anywhere between seven to 21 days. So you really wanna keep your eye on those seeds once you plant them. So after I plant these seeds, I'm gonna check them in about four to five days to see if they're starting to germinate. Now in August, I check after about three days because those fall crops, the brassicas, they will germinate after about three days. And if you miss it, they're leggy really fast. Shout out to my friend Rushni from Glamazini.com who made this awesome shirt. Check it out on her website, Glamazini.com. This shirt says, set healthy boundaries, work your goals, see a therapist, hydrate, mind your business. Shout out Rushni, awesome shirt, love it. Okay, 
So let's get started. <clears throat> I don't have a specific amount of water to seed starter mix that I will pour in. I like to just get it moist and very hot. a lot of seeds that I'm starting today so I'm gonna put a good bit of mix in here and if I need to boil more later then I will I have a spatula that's designated just for my gardening projects get you a spatula and protect it okay protect it So I'm gonna start mixing, <clears throat> even though there's definitely not enough water in here yet, I just want it to get distributed well. I don't wanna end up with anything muddy, <clears throat> just moist. Have y'all ever thought about that being a weird word? <laughs> Moist. <laughs> and again, you're not trying to get to the consistency of mud, right? You don't want it muddy. You just want the soil or the starting mix to remain like individual granules, but you want the hot water to get to all of it. And now, the secret weapon, a trash bag. I stick this tub of starter mix in a trash bag and seal it up. I'm gonna let this sit for about 10 minutes and while it's sitting, I'm gonna get my trays ready with the cups so that I can start putting the soil in with the seeds. All right, y'all, my seed starting mix is ready to go. It sat for about 10 minutes. It is nice and hot. <laughs> And I think that it's ready to go into the cups now. So I'm gonna go and just start packing it into these cups, which have already been relabeled as I showed you earlier. And then we'll put some seeds in. So as you can see, the cup has a good amount of potting mix in it. It is not full. It's just up to that rim, to the line, about a half an inch below the rim. And I'll put the seed in the middle and then cover it with some loose potting mix afterward. All right, so I have my seedling pots filled with starting mix. So what I'm gonna do now is a trick I learned again from Miss Linda Arsenault. I'm gonna take a chopstick and I'm just gonna poke a hole right in the top of my pot. Not a big hole, maybe not even a quarter of an inch. Just a little hole, which is where I'm gonna drop the seed. Now, in the past, I have done about three or four seeds per pot, and that got me a bunch of seedlings. But what I realized was that I have a small space, and that's too many seedlings for me. I understand that there's the need to maximize um, your germination rate and try to get as many as you can. But what I found was that that actually made a lot more work for me. And then I was struggling with trying to find some place to put them if they did germinate. So I'm okay just starting two of each. However, I want to make it clear that you can start two to four of each, but you are going to have to separate them once they start to grow and get about two to three true leaves. I'm not going to do that, so I am being a little unorthodox and I'm starting one seed per pot because I don't want to have to separate them out and then repot them in another pot. So again, for me, this is gonna work really well because I have a small space. Remember, I don't have an enormous yard. I'm not planning 
with tons of grow beds in mind. So the way I've planned things out, I have eight tomatoes, eight eggplants, and eight peppers, and they're all of different varieties, two of each variety. Yes, I'm pushing it, but if I do two per pot, I'm going to have twice the amount of each, and I'm not good at giving them away or just deciding not to use them. Um, once, once they're growing, I want to use them. I'm really not good at getting rid of them. So I'm just going to start one per pot. This is a scotch bonnet cup. I want some scotch bonnet peppers. This year I decided I was gonna go ahead and start these. I've had them for a little while. I bought them last year from seedsnow.com. This is not a paid advertisement. <laughs> no sponsorship here. Just letting you know where I got these seeds from. In case you're wondering what they look like, they're little tiny pepper seeds. There he is right there. I'm gonna make my hole actually a little bit deeper. <laughs> that deep. Put the seed in there and then cover it over. And there you have it. So I'm going to get the rest of these done and then I'll be back. Y'all, if you're enjoying this video, which I know I am, please thumbs up the video. Thumbs upping our videos makes such a huge difference. It helps us um, getting our videos recognized getting people to see them. So if you thumbs up and or like and share my video and comment on it, that would make a world of difference to me. Also, please subscribe if you're not subscribed already. I make lots of content like this. It's a lot of fun. We have videos where my family is involved. We show you life on our little micro homestead. We have a great time. So please like the video, subscribe, share it with your friends and comment. Tell me what your thoughts are. If you have any questions about the seed starting process that I have not mentioned in this video, please ask, let me know. I would be happy to answer any questions that I can. And anybody that has input or advice, please drop it in the comments, share your thoughts with us. I would love to learn from you as well. Alrighty guys, so all of the cups have seeds in them now. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually water them from the bottom. That is how you water seedlings. You really don't want to pour water from the top. That could displace the seed, you could lose it. So I'm going to pour water into the tray. I like to move one of the cups to pour the water in. And I pour about a quarter of an inch worth of water into the tray and then allow it to absorb from the bottom. That's why the cups have these little holes. Somebody knew. <laughs> So the next thing I do, which is a little bit tricky, is try to get the excess water out of the tray because I need to put the tray in a bag and stick that under the couch. So you don't want water sitting in this tray. Now you can choose your way of doing it. I've used a baster to suction water out. Um, I honestly usually just take this to the sink, take the cups out, pour the excess water out and then put them back in and then put the whole tray in the bag. That's what I'm gonna do now. All right guys, so I have emptied the water out of the tray. The last step in this process then is to put the tray in a bag and then stick that bag underneath my couch. This is really easy. Other people have covers for the trays. I don't do all that. I use a bag. My bag has a nice drawstring on the end, so I close it most of the way. You know it's gonna have a little teeny opening, but that's fine. I close it most of the way, take this tray and put it under the couch. Because again, we're in a small space. We don't have like a grow room where we can put our seedlings where it's nice and dark and then we can come get them later and put them on the grow rack, no. The grow room is under the couch. And once they germinate, we'll take them out and put them on the grow rack, which is in the dining room. Guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and got some good tips about how to start seeds in your house for the summer and spring crops. You can use the same information for the winter and, and autumn crops. Here's Hawk. <laughs> you haven't met Hawk before, but this is Hawk. And this is Kalani. Actually, I don't think I've ever introduced 
<laughs> my family members. This is my daughter, Kalani. She's holding the hawk. You haven't met hawk yet. You have met Biscuit and seen her quite a bit. Kalani is usually the one holding a bird. Um, hawk is really interested in getting down. <laughs> the other chickens are outside screaming for her, so that's what you hear in the background. <laughs> Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to thumbs no. up the video. <laughs> no, Maki wants you to thumbs up the video. <laughs> anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to thumbs up the video, to comment. Is it this? <laughs> She's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and subscribe. <laughs> we would love to have you. You'll get to see more Baki Kalani. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Got a straight jacket now. <clears throat> You'll get to see more of Baki Hawk, Kalani, Biscuit, and the other girls, as well as my husband Eric and son Joshua. All right, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you later. Bye.